familiar with uh, Phoenix Harrows, Phillips Harrows. These are actually a little bit different. A standard rotary harrow has two tines per section. This has three. That means we have more tools, we hit the ground more often. Everything, every way that they have these harrows set up on here, from my experience, should not work. But with these harrows, it works really, really well. They just kind of defy logic what I'm used to. So it allows us to actually overlap the harrows a little bit so they always cover no matter what angle you have them at. We also have the ability to run them backwards now, or sorry, the aggressive setting. I can use them backwards, now it's aggressive. Right now we're gonna have them set at 25 <laughs> degrees on the standard setting. The reason for that, you'll notice our center harrow is fairly full. Now that's because we had it at the aggressive setting in the long green residue, so it'll fill up. The one thing you gotta keep in mind with the rotary harrow is that as long as the Ninja tool is left sticking out, it's still working. The rotary harrow is not plugged until it stops turning. Oh. But that doesn't look real pretty, so once we get up to speed, you'll see kind of a little kaboom. Try going and all that over stuff there. Just fly out of it. Try so going it's a great combination there. with this unit. Um, the you know, by themselves, the smart tilt tines by themselves will throw up little lumps, create you know pockets, and then the harrows do a great job of coming and working a surface. That's that actually works your residue, get it to break up and decompose. That's what's going to give you your leveling because there's not a lot of sideways movements with the tines. For guys doing aerating, say in Hayland, this is a great tool because the tines will aerate the surface or aerate the soil, get rid of root bounding issues. The rotary hair on the back will actually take down your mole hills, your pocket gopher hills, and you can overseed with them too. They'll actually incorporate the seed to overseed. Why we see a lot of guys here in cropland using them is we're getting a lot of shallow compaction issues. You know, we talked before Mr. about getting Crystal. down to the eight inch range. Um, a lot of that comes from you know like your approaches, um, and a lot of it actually is coming from no-tilling. And the reason no-tilling is causing it is because guys are setting their air drill now to seeding depth, and they don't ever change it. You know what created the plow pan? It wasn't actually the plow. It was that nobody was you know energetic enough to actually change the depth of the plow. And whenever you run a tillage tool, the same depth year after year after year, you create a plow pan. Okay, we're actually doing it with our air seeders. An air seeder is just a fancy cultivator. By running the same depth year after year after year, we're actually creating a shallow plow pan there now that's causing issues for a lot of guys. So this is the ideal tool for going in and removing those kind of layers. What's impressed a lot of guys, I have one of these running up in Peace River right now, Steve Petlock. He had, he owns a Landall VT and he owns a Smart Tilt. Where he didn't have compaction, he used a penetrometer like this, pushed it in the ground where he had compaction he used the smart till where he didn't he uses the VT plus and see here we're about seven inches roughly we have a 200 psi so we're going to reach down with this machine eliminate that layer and again this goes back to the true vertical tillage we're going to remove the tillage layers that are in there allow the roots to grow deeper allow moisture to migrate up what Steve was really impressed with he could set this in the most aggressive setting run it at 10 mile an hour and seed behind it with a seed hawk this spring. But it was a and where his neighbor across the road has water standing in his field, all he has is barley up to his armpit. So he's been really impressed with this unit and the combination you of the just, two together. Um, just take and cut it. And it did a really nice job, broke up a bunch of uh, hayland there, just took and he was trying to incorporate a bunch of manure, just wanted to open up. He knew everything was hard but uh, this poor old tractor, he said, uh, usually we go all day, about 10 hours on a tank of fuel, and we got four and we were done. So that ended that demo. But um, as he talked about the springs, um, rocks, uh, it's not going to lift rocks up. That's kind of the big thing. Lots of guys are trying to get through that plow pan. It takes and uh, just knifes it open. The more, uh, at, at eight miles an hour, at uh, two and a half degrees, it'll bring about an inch of loose material up on top. Once we go to five degrees, it's about two inches. Seven and a half, it's about two and a half inches of loose material. At 10 degrees, it'll bring about three inches of loose material. Now again, that depends on your soil type where you're at, but it will do some small amount of cultivation. If you look on my website, we were up at uh, Herschel, Saskatchewan, we were doing a bunch of area up there that it was all lentil ground stuff that he couldn't uh, seed last fall or last year and we uh, actually did a fair amount of ruts and cleaned it up and it knocked the horns off it 
that's about it really but it uh, it actually do will do a little bit of uh, 10 degrees it will do a little cultivation most of the time we try and keep it in that seven and a half to find is seven and a half to five degrees is where it does the best performance in springtime two and a half is kind of the ultimate you just want to open up the ground it's kind of like a car engine the guy said all your ground needs a little bit of opening to get the uh, fertilizer in uh, air water mixture so for doing maintenance as Todd talked about earlier in his speech about vertical tillage this is a tool that you'll use every year uh, the drier it gets, the more you're going to see the benefit of this machine. As he talked about roots going down into the ground, uh, getting that moisture. And that's what this will do, is it breaks up compaction, just opens it up, gives it more air, uh, more production. One other point I just wanted to bring up before we run it. Um, a lot of guys too are concerned about running this machine 8 inches deep, creating that pocket. Oh well, man, everything's just going to dry out 8 inches deep and I'll have no moisture to plant into. I know. Uh, Seed pet like up in Peace River was worried about that, and he's got some heavy soil. It's a heavy clay. He was concerned about the machine even penetrating. Penetration wasn't an issue. He had a compaction layer of 300 psi, three inches deep. You know, worked in all of it fine. What really impressed him though was even in that heavy clay, when there was damp underneath, he still had moisture come up. Like he never, he never over dried it. Anything that he dried near the surface, moisture would migrate up afterwards, and it, he didn't over dry. So you don't have to worry about that. Although it is chewing up the residue, it probably isn't a tool you're going to buy exclusively for residue management. I mean, it's chewing up, mixing some dirt with it, but it's not gaining at all. Uh, your wheat stubble can be nice though because you can actually set this as it's working 8 inches deep, but still letting the stu standing stubble stand. So it does give you that ability to run in the screen in condition like this. This kind of screen time conditions. You can see it's opening it up, but at the same time, it's firm enough that you can actually run across it afterwards. And that's, that's what I just wanted to comment that Todd, it's leaving the soil block there. It's not taking it loose enough that you can't do anything with it. It, it just de decompacts it and as time goes on, the holes will fill up. Very similar to aerating your lawn. You know how it gets root bound and everything else like that. Your, uh, your nutrients will go back into the ground and it'll just uh, absorb more air, more fertilizer.